Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Beginner Basics Guide for the Cleric class. Now, the Cleric class is a character that can do many different things. Healing their allies and their friends, burning their foes in holy fire, uh, deflecting and destroying the undead, and charging into combat as a holy warrior. Now, for the purpose of Beginner Basics, we're going to be focusing on mostly the spellcasting aspect of Cleric as this is the clearer and easier thing to get into, as melee builds tend to require a little bit more finesse and finagling to learn a little bit about. If you want to try a Holy Warrior, I recommend checking out the Paladin video, which is a little bit more straightforward and in general, almost exclusively better as a melee character than a melee cleric. So, what makes a cleric and how do you make a cleric? Well, first, let's talk about stats. If you want to make a cleric, you need many different stats to make it work. First, you need constitution. Everybody needs constitution, as this is your total amount of hit points, so you're always going to need some of that. But to cast spells, clerics actually use their wisdom. So the more wisdom you have, the harder your spells are going to hit, because they're going to have a higher uh, spell save, so it makes it so monsters can't resist it as hard, and it gives you additional spell points. On top of that, you can also get Charisma here, which allows you to turn undead. Now, turning undead is a little bit complicated, so we'll talk about that a bit later, but this stat isn't quite as important as your Wisdom in most cases. So generally, if you're going to play a cleric, uh, cleric, you want to start with some Constitution, you want to start with as high Wisdom as you can afford, a little bit of Charisma for some of your turning stuff, and then generally the rest of the stats aren't as important. Intelligence isn't super important for clerics, because while having a higher Intelligence gives them more skill points, you don't generally need that many skill points when you're playing as a cleric. Dexterity, again, you're not super a melee combatant, and you're not going to be worrying too much about like reflex saves, that sort of thing. Uh, it does matter, but it's not as impactful as some of the other stats. And then strength, again, really only if you're a melee cleric. I would recommend starting with maybe a 10 or a 12 here, just because clerics do wear heavy armor, and you don't want to become overburdened. So in general, if you're looking for a stat start, I would say start with maybe like an 18 Wisdom, a 14 Constitution, and then maybe something like uh, a 10 Strength and a 12 Charisma if you're just getting started, uh, and you'll have a build below if you want to follow that. If you have a 32 build like this character is, you can follow this exact stat distribution. And when you level up, make sure you're putting points into Wisdom when you get more points. As far as your skills, Clerics don't need a lot of them. As I said before, uh, you don't really need to worry about pretty much most of them. Concentration is an important skill because it makes it so when monsters hit you, uh, you don't have to worry about like losing your spells, which is how you stay concentrating on them. However, there are effects you can use to bypass this, so concentration doesn't become that big of a deal. In general, heal and spellcraft become some of the main things for clerics. My characters start with an 8 intelligence, but because I'm playing as a human, I get 2 points per level. So with heal and spellcraft, this allows you to get a little bit of extra healing power, as heal skill increases your healing spell power by 1 point, uh, which means that I'm effectively getting 11% more healing on all my spells. And spellcraft increases your spell damage. So both very powerful, useful things. Um, but if you only have 1 point, say you want to play as a race that is not a human, you want to play as a dwarf and you're starting with an 8 intelligence, Heal is good enough. Spellcraft, the, the impact of your skills and your overall output and damage is not that high. And the rest of the skills don't really matter too much. Um, as far as your uh, spells, let's take a look at that right now. Because clerics have quite a few spells. You get a lot of extra spell slots as you level up. You start with a couple and you get more as you level. And clerics get spells every odd level. So level 1, then at level 2, or 2 you don't get any new spells or spell types, but you get new spells at level 3, level 2 spells, level 5 you get level 3, level 7 you get level 4 spells, and so on. So every odd level you're going to be picking up a brand new level of spells. And I'm using the word level interchangeably. Thank 3.5 D&D for that one. So, when you decide you want to cast a spell, there are a few things you need to know, and you can read them on this little chart here. Number one, it'll tell you the name of the spell and the cooldown. It tells you the targeting, so who it's generally for. So if you're confused about what a spell is for, you can even just read right there what you're supposed to do with it. It tells you the save. Now, the save is how hard a spell is to resist. So when you are attacked by a spell or an effect, you make a save based on your saves here. Fortitude, Reflex, and Will, which come from your Wisdom for Will. Reflex uh, comes from your Dexterity, and Constitution for your Fortitude. So if a monster, let's just say, tried to hit me with a negative spell, and I needed a 15, you roll a 20-sided dice. The game will do that automatically for you. You don't have to stop and do that. And so you'll make your saving throws, and with that, I will only need a 4 or better on that 20-sided die to actually make a 15 save. And that's generally how it works. The higher your Wisdom, it feeds directly into this number. So getting your saves up there is very important for actually allowing your spells to deal damage to monsters, which is why you need Wisdom 
uh, as a big deal. Your spells will only work if monsters will fail their save. Important note, the saves aren't always relevant. So for example here, this is Cure Wounds. Cure Wounds heals people. So if I press this button, my character's going to spend some spell points, and then I did a cure. Um, I didn't make a save because this is only when you're hurting someone, like an undead. Your holy spells can hurt undead or heal allies. Also, don't use your cure spells to damage undead. It is very inefficient. I would recommend using most of the damage spells. Underneath that, you can see the spell point cost and the con or the school. Uh, the spell school, there are several different types. That just determines if you have any bonuses to that individual school if they apply. So for example, this says conjuration. So if I have like a, a scepter that gives me bonuses to my conjuration or a hat that gives me bonuses to conjuration, that will apply here. Um, your spells are mostly going to vary between evocation, conjuration, and enchantment, and necromancy for the most part as a cleric. Then you have your metamagics, it tells you which ones apply, we'll talk about metamagics in a bit. Your components, so you can see the somatic, vermal, verbal, and other things. Um, these don't matter for the most part, mostly just make sure you have the material components to be able to cast your spells. Uh, clerics have a lot of very good spells that have material components. Don't worry about them being expensive, they're not, they're just things you have to go buy in town. And then lastly, spell resistance. Now spell resistance is complicated, so I'm going to save that for the end of the video, but for now just kind of ignore that. Now as far as what your spells do, you get a lot of them. Clerics don't have to learn their spells or inscribe them, you just have access to the entire list once you get that level of spell. So I already have all the level 1 spells. To be able to equip them, head into any tavern, which I'm currently in right now, I'm in the Phoenix, take a spell, drag it into your action bar here, and now you can see it's down here, my spell is now equipped. So now that my spell is equipped, I can put it on my bar, and I can cast it, and I can cast Protection from Evil. Now, clerics have a wide variety of spells, some damage, some protection. So, for example, you have Nimbus of Light here, a spell that shoots out and deals damage to monsters. You generally shoot like a little light beam out versus Protection from Evil, which keeps you protected. Clerics have a balance of offensive and defensive spells as well as healing spells, and they are the only class in the game that pretty much gets healing spells for free. And the reason why I say that is because clerics, as you can see here, Cure Light and Cure Moderate, I didn't put this in into the actual uh, spell slot here. Instead, these are automatically granted to you. Clerics know all the cure spells right away. You don't have to waste spell slots on them, so you can automatically cure no matter what. So if you're playing as a cleric, you can just pick other spells that sound interesting, and you never have to worry about this at all. So if you want to grab a damage spell like DFX Vengeance, because you like playing as a damage type cleric, you just grab DFX Vengeance, put it on your action bar, click on someone, and deal some damage. Managing your spell points can be kind of tricky, and it will take practice, but there are a couple ways to get around this. Now, if you're unsure about what each individual spell does, just make sure you give them a quick cursory read through and uh, try to check to see how useful or valuable they might be in a mo uh, at any given scenario. So something like Nimbus of Light, a glittering corona of light coalesces around your arm, dealing damage to a monster, and it shoots like a, a beam. Pretty good. Probably pretty valuable. Um, another spell like Doom, Inflicts a monster with dread, making them weaker. May be valuable. Depends on how fast you're killing monsters. So think about your spells. Try them out if you're unsure. Don't worry about like having a spell that's wrong. Because if I try Doom and I go, ah, you know what? This Doom is really not working out for me. Just click it and it's gone. Just give it the old double click and it disappears. And as you level up, your spells are going to get more varied and in higher strength. So you generally want to cast higher level spells. If you're playing as a spellcaster, make sure that you're usually taking one of the higher level damage spells. As the higher you go, the more damage you get and the better effects you get on them. As an example, right here, I get uh, Nimbus of Light, which just deals a little bit of damage to monsters, which is good. You just shoot out a beam. But then later on, you can get Soundburst. And Soundburst is very similar to Nimbus of Light, but... It's an explosion of sound, so it blasts an area. So it hits multiple monsters, and it can stun people, making it a lot more valuable depending on the situation. Although it does cost more spell points, so again, it's one of those things you kind of have to think about. Now, how do you actually make your spells more powerful? Because we talked about the fact that it comes from your stat, your wisdom feeds directly into that save, but what else can you do? Well, the next thing I want to talk about is spell power. You can find your spell power by mousing over this little icon here that's next to your spell points. This little purple thing. And when you do that, you can actually see your spell power breakdown. It'll tell you all your spell powers, your spell critical chance, and your spell critical multiplier. Now, the spell powers uh, are a direct translation to a percentage increase on damage. So right now, it says positive 44. That means I have 44 spell power from somewhere. And that 44 is a 44% increase of spell damage with that type. So this is positive, which means healing. So all my healing spells are 44% stronger. It's a one-to-one. -one. Uh, so if you 
pick up an item that gives you 100% positive spell power, that's 100% increased healing on all of your spells. All right? Now, which spell powers do you need? Well, as a cleric, fire. You do get a few fire spells at the higher level. The other levels, not so much, but at the higher levels. Light, very important. All of your offensive spells use light. Healing or positive goes without saying. It's kind of good. And then if you want, for sound burst, you can pick up some sonic. But outside of that, that's pretty much all of them. There is one or two spells that also scale off of four spell power, but those are a little bit later, and you'll be able to determine that once you see them there. Now, to get spell power, the ways that you do that is either by leveling up these skills. As I said, heal and spellcraft give you some spell power. But the majority of it is going to come from your items, as well as from your um, actual action, not action, your enhancement tree, which we'll talk about in a bit. So, for example, the starter heavy mace says devotion on it. It says passive. Uh, you can't even see it because it's by my head. Move this over here. It's devotion, passive plus 30, bonus to positive spell power. That means that by holding this, I get 30% more healing on all of my spells. So keep that in mind. You want to have things that say spell power on them. So anything, if it doesn't say spell in the name on an item effect, it won't affect your spells. Pretty straightforward. If I want to make my spell stronger, I need spell power or spell critical or spell something. It'll have the word spell in there. And that's the gist of how spells work. Experiment around and try to see the things that you actually like. And if you, again, if you're unsure about which spells you should definitely take, I'll have a link below, which will have all of the, uh, like a quick and dirty guide to follow so you'll know which spells you should be using. Now, with that being said, let's talk about feats. Feats. Clerics get a lot of them, and you get a feat at level one and every three levels after that. Now, with your feats, you have a few options. I'm going to detail out the kind of offensive spell caster cleric feats I recommend. Number one is the meta magic feats. Meta magic feats are special abilities that allow you to increase the power of your spells, but making them cost more spell points. So remember when I was talking about how um, concentration, you needed to avoid that when monsters hit you, you would lose your spells? Well, Quicken makes it so that while you cast spells, they go twice as fast and you don't need to make a concentration check if you take damage, but they take more spell points. So for example, Cure Wounds, I wave my arms around, it's okay, but I turn on Quicken Spell and then boom, it's done. Quicken Spell is addictive and very, very good. However, it dramatically increases the cost of your spells. Same with Maximize. And if you turn these on, you're going to run out of spell points very quickly. But the reason why that's actually okay is not because you want to run out of spell points. It's because of something called spell-like abilities. Out of your enhancement tree, uh, your character is able to pick up things called spell-like abilities. So, for example, here is a Nimbus of Light spell-like ability. Any spell that comes from an enhancement tree, you can see at the bottom there, it says spell-like ability. This ability benefits from your metamagic feats, such as maximize spell, without paying the additional cost. So, if you take spell-like abilities, like this Nimbus of Light here, you can cast it whenever you want, and you can put on all your metamagic feats, and it doesn't cost any more. So your Nimbus of Light, you can quicken it and maximize it so it gets 150 extra spell power and it's super strong, and it costs no more. And this, if I just put my points into it, all of a sudden is going to max out and it's only going to cost two spell points with a cooldown of four seconds. Two spell points? Yeah, I think I can afford that one. So that's kind of the cool thing about metamagic feats. When you combine them with spell-like abilities, you can do a lot of cool stuff. However, to activate them, you have to click them on, which means they're going to affect your other spells. But fortunately, there is a workaround to this. On any of your spells in your action bar, you can right-click, and then it'll allow you to actually set individual spell conditions. So if I want this Cure Moderate to have Maximize on it, I can say Maximize Always On, so it's right there. And then I can take another Cure Moderate, so I can have two. I could have my Maximize Cure Moderate, I could have my regular Cure Moderate, or you could have your spell-like ability. That's the general rule of thumb, and you're going to want to use your spell-like abilities whenever you can. And the reason why this is especially important, every spellcaster is going to want to take meta magic feats because Quicken is just amazing. In general, you're you're going to get to the point where you're going to want to leave Quicken on all the time, although you don't do that at the start. But eventually, later on, you'll probably do that, especially considering late in the tree, which we'll talk about, you can get efficient meta magic, which makes it cost less. But clerics also get domains. And so domains, which we'll talk about shortly, uh, all give you spell-like abilities as casters, and some of them are very, very cool and very exciting, meaning your character will have tons of spells to cast all the time that cost extremely small amounts of spell points, but have a lot of oomph and power from the metamagic feats. So don't sleep on these. Quicken, Maximize, and any others are very, very nice. However, you also want to buff up the actual strength of your spells, and that is where these spell focus feats come in. Spell focus feats increase the save DC, which is, again, that saving throw, um, of your spells by one, depending on the school. Now, clerics are generally evocation spellcasters for damage, so evocation is what I'd recommend here. 
It's very strong, and it allows your spells to land a little bit more. So spell focus evocation, greater spell focus evocation are great tools. Additionally, there's also a feat called mental toughness that gives you more spell points and also allows you to critically hit more often with your spells. Both are very, very nice to just let you both do more damage and also just cast more stuff. Uh, so that is kind of my recommendations there. Meta magic feats, spell focus in the evocation generally, and also your... Uh, mental toughness there. So a quick look at every single domain to try to help uh, you get a handle on which domains you should be looking at. So they're going to be broken down into kind of like two different categories, or I guess three different categories. You have like weird defense and utility, you have melee oriented, and you have spell oriented. So let's take a look at each one. So starting out we have air domain. Air domain makes your evocation DCs better, so you get your uh, spells to land more often, and it also gives you a bunch of lightning spells, like Shocking Grasp, Lightning Bolt, and uh, Chain Lightning, you can cast for very little cost as a cleric. Clerics don't get any electrical spells, so it's very interesting. And it also allows it so when you turn undead, you can turn elementals, and your party gains reflex saving throws. Very powerful domain, highly recommended for any type of offensive cleric. It is a great and inspired choice for anyone that wants to kill some people with lightning. Moving on, we have the Animal Domain. Animal Domain is extremely powerful because it allows you to turn animals, if you want, to make them get instantly killed or run away from you in fear. It also allows you, when you use Turn Undead, people gain Constitution, which is like, okay. But the big hitter is right here, Cleric, at level 5. You gain 10 hit points per level, and you also get 10 hit points for each epic level you have gained. So uh, this character is very powerful because if you just take Animal Domain, at a pure Cleric, you get 300 health at level 30, and if you only take 5 levels of Cleric uh, to get this, because you only need level 5, which many people, including myself, will do, you get five, uh, 50 hit points for 5 levels of Cleric, and an extra 10 per Epic, so which means you get 150 health for only 5 levels of Cleric, making it very good. And then finally you have this Feral Charge ability. Now Feral Charge is interesting, it's a very powerful attack, um, but it is uh, not so much like a damage thing, it's just a knockdown. Very useful if you're playing like uh, somebody with some trip bonuses, maybe as a melee cleric, but not the greatest, it's mostly just an escape. You can use it to like try to charge and quickly move around, which is very nice. Next we have the Chaos Domain, which gives you some will saves, which doesn't really matter. The Turn Undead gives you some stats, but they're random, so they're not as impactful. The most important thing is you, you get a Chaos Hammer spell-like ability, which is fun to use. Uh, some Spell Crit, which is okay, and Prismatic Spray, which is a very powerful spell, and you don't normally get this on Cleric, but Cleric doesn't necessarily need it. Overall, Chaos Domain is one of the lower tier domains, not something you really want to focus into. Death Domain, on the other hand, goes perfectly with any type of negative energy cleric, or even as a healer cleric, because you get a bunch of necromancy DCs, allowing your necromancy spells to be even more powerful. On top of that, you turn better, which a lot of people like turning undead, so it's very helpful for that. You get Necrotic Ray, one of the best damage spells in the whole game, as a spell-like ability at level 5, that's insane, and a destruction spell-like ability, so you can cast destruction for a cheaper cost, and you can have two of them. So very powerful if you're a crowd control caster, if you're a offensive undead or negative caster, or even a healer, a death domain is amazing, and I highly recommend it on pretty much any character you can. Uh, next is Destruction Domain. Destruction Domain is a melee domain, and honestly, in my opinion, I do not think this domain is very good. So by taking it, you can cast your cleric spells while raging. There are other ways to get spells while raging, but uh, it generally, you're not going to have rage if you're doing this. There's very few scenarios, but important to note, this only works with cleric spells. Additionally, you get a little bit of melee power, which is okay. It's fine, but it's not that much. Uh, when you turn on dead, you gain more melee power, which is nice. Now we're starting to get some to some real numbers, um, and you get some double strike and strike through. But overall, it's not a very powerful melee destiny. And if you're playing as a melee cleric, you probably want the other domain war, which we'll talk about in a bit. So low tier melee destiny. Now Earth domain. Earth domain is one of the lowest tier destinies on here um, because it looks good, but it's not. So you can turn elementals just like lightning. That's cool. You get acid spell power, just like how lightning gets lightning. Cool. Oh, this other thing here says your acid spells you will use light spell power. If it's higher, your light spells will use acid. This only counts for spells and not spell-like abilities due to a bug in the game code, which means that Melf's acid arrow will not use your light spell power that you get out of here, which means that you should never actually, you know, you need acid spell power for this character, but clerics only get one acid spell, which is the actual earth domain Melf's acid arrow. Now, as you move into endgame, maybe you want to use some of the acid abilities out of some of the enhancement trees, and there's some consideration for that, but honestly, there's way better spells. The lightning, fire, and water domains are all going to do a lot better than earth. Uh, the only good saving grace about earth is you get earthquake. Earthquake's great crowd control, but you're a cleric, so you have greater command. So you very rarely actually want earthquake. You'd much rather just take enchantment DCs and do a little bit better. So I don't really recommend uh, earth domain. 
However, Fire Domain, completely different story. It's got the other stuff, the turning on dead, the fire spell power. Um, when you turn on dead, you get fire resistance, who cares? Scorching Ray spell like ability, tons of damage. Wall of Fire, tons of damage. Firestorm, the, the second highest fire damage spell in the whole game. Great choice. Uh, fire Domain is good, very, very good for uh, Cleric, for damage. Very high tier caster domain if you want to pick a caster domain. Good Domain. Uh, gives you light spell power, some healing skills. Uh, when you turn on dead, people get temporary hit points, which is okay. Uh, Deific Vengeance is a reasonable spell-like ability. It does some damage. It's not the worst hitting spell, um, but I would never... You know, it's, it's not that great. Blade Barrier spell-like ability. Blade Barrier is a spell that has really fallen out of favor, so it's not that good. And you get bonuses against evil creatures. Good Domain is okay. Uh, it's something you can do if you want to have a little bit of fun. You want to be themed. But definitely, in terms of caster destinies, there's better ones, especially even ones that use light spell power, like the Sun Domain, which is a superior option. We'll talk about that later. Healing Domain. This is confusing, but uh, this is a terrible, terrible, terrible domain for a few reasons. So problem number one, we have uh, positive spell power. That's good. So why is that bad? Well, when you turn on dead, you and your party get 20 healing amplification. That's okay. But in general, if you want to he heal and you're pressing turn on dead, you would rather have an effect that's more offensive, like stopping an undead or instantly killing a different type of monster. Imagine you could delete an elemental instead of giving people healing amplification. That heals people for a lot more, so generally it's going to be a better effect. Pure Moderate Moon Spell-like ability. Important note that clerics already get this out of the Radiant Servant tree, and it shares a cooldown. Which means if you're a healer and you're, you would want to take healing domain, you probably are putting points in the Radiant Servant tree, so you don't need this. So that's bad. Um, Panacea is just... An okay spell. Uh, you can get a scroll at level 9 to cover off the same thing of heal, and it's better in every way. So this is bad. And your healing skills are empowered as if you had empowered healing metamagic. This does not stack with empowered healing metamagic. And clerics get empowered healing bonuses. So everything in this, in this healing domain is bad. If you're playing as a healing cleric, never take healing domain. Take something else. Next we have knowledge domain. Now knowledge domain is not great, but... It has a couple of cool features. Number one, it gives you intelligence, which is totally useless, and some skills. You get suggestions in Feeble Mind, which are not that great, but you gain spell pen and bonus to the DCs of all spells. There are better destinies, but this one's not that bad. Feeble Mind and Suggestion will probably never come up in conversation, but, you know, they're there. Law Domain. So Law Domain gives you a plus one to the or plus to your enchantment DCs, as well as you get Order's Wrath and Greater Command. Now, when I said that Chaos Domain was not that great as some wonky stuff, this one is actually very powerful. Number one, Order's Wrath stuns chaotic creatures, so against demons and evil outsiders, you're going to get a lot of good hits here. However, it also gives you greater command spell-like ability, so it's a cheap cost, cheap cooldown, greater command, and enchantment DCs, which works directly with greater command. Greater command is a spell that you cast, and it makes people sit down for a really long time, like up to a minute. And so monsters can't do anything. Uh, it's one of the best cleric... Uh, Crowd control as you can get. It works on Reapers. Uh, it works on so many different types of monsters. As long as the character speaks your language, you make it sit down. Very, very nice. And so Law Domain definitely hits it as one of the better crowd control epic, or not epic destinies, crowd control domains. Next, we have the Luck Domain. So if you want to play a healer, try Luck. Why? Well, you gain bonus to all your saving throws. That's good. When you turn on dead, you gain even more saving throws. That's good. This counts for all your healing turns. So if you cast like a... Um, a positive energy burst. This will also give you a bonus of saving throws. So this is a huge impact on your character. You get displacement spell like ability, which is going to prevent you from taking like, half of the melee damage or physical damage that you would normally take, which is amazing. Plus to the DCs of all your spells. So guess what? I don't get plus four enchantment DCs like you would normally get here. And so you get plus two, but you can still cast greater command. You get the spells. So your character still has that powerful. And this one, you no, no longer automatically fail saving throws on the roll of a one. I roll ones all the time, and I eat it to Disintegrate, to Finger of Death, to Delayed Blast Fireball, to all these crazy spells. None of that. Don't fail to save on a one. Luck is an extremely powerful domain, and very, very good for healers. Any cleric in general, but healers especially. Next we have Magic Domain. Now, Magic Domain gives you Evocation DCs. It also gives you extra universal spell power when you turn undead, equal to twice your cleric level, which is not that bad. It's a good boost. You get Chain Missile spell -like ability which is not a good spell -like ability for Cleric, but it's kind of interesting. However, the most important thing is that you get bonus spell points and bonus universal spell power. So this character gets an 80 universal spell power. That's quite a bit. If you're planning on playing some type of multifaceted Cleric, maybe you're going into, like, later on, Chronic Incarnation, or you don't know what spell you want to cast, so you're casting, like, fire spells and light spells and all sorts of stuff. Not bad. 
it's definitely got the most straight up damage out of it. And it has evocation DCs. Overall, pretty good destiny if you just want to do some damage. Uh, it's pretty general, uh, but no spell-like abilities here, so you do have to make sure you're managing your mana costs as well. Although you get a little bit of extra spell points here, extra 300, which is not bad. Protection Domain. Now, Protection Domain is a defensive domain. It gives you a bunch of defensive stats, and it gives you even more defensive stats when you turn undead, so not bad. It gives you shield permanently, so no matter magic missile dealing with, uh, or trying to deal with that. You gain Radiant Force Field as a spell-like ability, which is a uh, effectively a cooldown. It makes you take 25% less damage for a short period of time. And you get Armor Class and Physical Resistance rating increased by your Cleric level. Uh, not a bad Destiny. Or not Destiny. Domain. Uh, a lot of defensive stats. Very, very strong. Pretty fun to work with. Uh, overall... Would you pick this over luck? Would you pick this over uh, animal domain? Animal domain is health. This is uh, defensive stats, like the PRR, MRR, and that sort of thing, and the cooldown. And luck domain is getting rid of probability. They're both different, depends on where your weaknesses are. If you hate seeing that roll of one, luck domain. If you just like consistent defense, uh, defense domain. If you just want a bunch of health, animal domain. That's kind of how I think about it in terms of the defensive, uh, defensive domains. All right, next is Strength Domain. Now, Strength Domain gives you strength, and it makes it so you get all your strength back every six seconds. It's kind of cool. The big thing here, and you also get strength when you turn undead, which is, again, okay. The big thing is the fact that your reflex saving throws are now based on strength instead of dexterity. So if you're playing as a strength-based character, that can be quite good. You're immune to knockdown effects, and you always make your saving throws against stuns. Now, Strength Domain is pretty bad in general because it doesn't add a lot of damage and it gives you weird defensive abilities. So for me, I consider Strength Domain more defensive destiny. De destiny. Domain. Come on, brain. Anyway, uh, you get Strength instead of Dex on your Reflex saves. If you're a Strength-based Cleric, that's not bad. Uh, immune to Knockdown effects is always good. Making saving throws against stuns is always good. Uh, I think of Strength Domain more like a Splash. Uh, maybe you're playing a Barbarian and you want to throw in some five levels of Cleric for whatever reason. Then you can get your Reflex saves based off Strength, so you have high Reflex saves. Overall, Strength Domain is just one of those things that is kind of niche, you really have to have a build going for it, and I would never recommend this for a first-time player. It's cool, but kind of useless. The think of Strength Domain like nunchucks. It's not the best, and there's something better usually. Okay, Sun Domain. Sun Domain is a bread and butter domain. Very, very, very good. Highly recommend. Gives you fire and light spell power. When you turn undead, it does something useless, which doesn't matter. But the most important thing is you get Searing Light and uh, as a spell-like ability. This shares the cooldown with the Divine Disciple spell-like ability, but unlike the Healing Domain, where you have to take this, that one, you don't have to take the Searing Light spell-like ability out of the tree, which means you can just spend your points in other places. And you really want to spend points in Divine Disciple because there's a lot of good stuff in there. So it's very good as a combo with that actual character ability, like that set of classes. Next, we have Sunbeam. One of the highest light damage spells in the game. Six second cooldown, level nine. Very good. And Sunburst, very high damage AoE. Eight second cooldown, extremely good. So just a bunch of just super hard hitting spell-like abilities, all light damage. Plus it gives you fire spell power, so you can mix in fire spells. Sun Domain, one of the top tier damage domains. The only downside is that you do not get extra DCs on this. So you have to keep that in mind. Now, Trickery Domain. Enchantment DCs. When you turn on dead, you get Charisma, which is okay. And then you get a bunch of spell-like abilities, none of which have a massive impact on the enemy uh, team or the monsters you go against. Charm Monster Mass is okay. Greater Command is better, which is why I would recommend Law Domain over Trickery. But Trickery is kind of neat, but it's basically just a worse Law Domain. War Domain! Now, War Domain is the melee destiny. Why? Because you get Holy Sword. So the thing is, Holy Sword here grants extra critical threat range and multiplier, so plus one enhancement bonus, and plus one competence bonus to threat range and multiplier for weapons. Important note that uh, clerics can't get this any other way, and this is an essential endgame weapon effect. So if you're playing as a melee cleric, you need Holy Sword or you have to multi-class. So if you are not multi-classing, like say taking some levels of fighter to get some extra critical multiplier, or you're not using like Inquisitive or uh, Vissani Knife Fighter, things that get built-in critical multiplier, you need to have this domain. So that's why this is kind of the essential one. Plus hit and damage is really nice. You get still get the divine bonus to melee and range power over top of like destruction or something. You gain proficiency in all martial and exotic weapons, which is amazing for the early levels because it means you just use whatever. So if you find like a really cool repeating crossbow, you find a Kopesh, you find a Kama, a Dwarven War Axe, it doesn't matter, you're proficient with it. Additionally, tactical DCs increase by half your cleric level. If you're playing any type of melee cleric, this is just great for super moving on to that late, late, late game. Getting those extra DCs very strong. So War Domain is the melee destiny. Unless you're playing something weird that gets uh, its critical from somewhere else or a big multi-class, you're essentially always in War Domain. Nothing else is going to beat it because getting extra critical, critical damage is essential. 
And then lastly, we have Water Domain. Water Domain gives you Water Breathing, Cold Spell Power, and it says your positive spells and your cold spells will actually use uh, spell power, uh, whichever one is higher. If this effect work, Water Domain would be God tier. It doesn't work. So it's pretty wishy-washy. But your turn on dead works on elementals, which is nice. And you get Solid Fog, Cone of Cold, and Greater Creeping Cold. Overall, Greater Creeping Cold is a fantastic spell. Cone of Cold is a fantastic spell. And Solid Fog is a very good defensive option if it took less time to cast. However, at level 5, if you're doing high, low-level High Reaper, um, very cool. Outside of that, Solid Fog is just it's just a good option. And it costs 10 mana. It's one of the best defensive spells in the whole game. It's a very good spell. Uh, it's just you don't you won't use it that often. People like to run around. But if you're solo and you want to play tactically, Solid Fog is a just a awesome, awesome spell. Cone of Cold um, being a great spell-like ability, and so is Greater Creeping Cold. Uh, you can get a lot of damage out of Water Domain, and if this healing effect worked, I would recommend this for a lot of people's healers, because it allows you to just belt out damage as you're also healing from the back line, which would be very, very cool. So which pack, or which domain should you choose? It's a tough call, but as I said, I kind of broke them down. Hopefully this has helped you out, and you'll be able to make a decision about which domain you want to use. Now, the last thing I want to talk about in terms of feats is the specific cleric feats, and that is your deity feats and your turn on dead. Now, as I talked about before, we're going to, you know, domains uh, with domains. The turn on dead is a specific thing to cleric and paladin. Now, the way this works is really complicated. So if you read this box of text, it's going to tell you a bunch of words. What you need to know is that turn on dead is based off of your cleric level, your charisma, and items that you have that boost turn on dead or effects that you have that boost turn on dead. So what does that mean? Eh, it's really hard to say, but I'll give you the long and short of it. Essentially, turn on dead... You can feel free to go look into this, but if you're playing on normal or hard, turn on dead is going to probably stun most of the undead that are nearby you, which is really good. So you walk into a quest with some undead, just press turn on dead, they'll get stunned and you should be a good time. On elite difficulty, especially if you're on level, you're probably not going to stun any undead. However, you can beef it up here by getting extra or improved turning in Radiant Servant, as the Radiant Servant is able to turn undead. And you can get Mighty Turning so that you can instantly kill Undead. So if you're playing on Normal or Hard, you can grab these abilities here and instantly kill Undead. If you're playing on Elite Difficulty, you can for the most part ignore Turn Undead unless you really understand how it works and focus into it. It is complicated because the 3.5 version is complicated and I'm hoping someday they make it simpler. Um, but it has this whole nonsense with Hit Dice, which isn't a stat that's displayed and all this other stuff. So Turn Undead, very exciting. And the second thing is your religion. Now, uh, I'm going to put a link below, which will be a chart that shows you all the deities, so you can determine which one you want to take. And there's a lot of different ones. Each deity comes with a favored weapon, as well as a favored ability. And it grants you a special superpower that allows you to um, do many things, like increase your melee damage, or you can give yourself, uh, make yourself tankier, or you can cure all ailments from somebody. And they all have big 10-minute cooldowns. So trying to figure out which one is the best can be difficult for you. My recommendation, if you don't know what to pick, Sovereign Host. Sovereign Host gives you Longsword proficiency, which is very helpful if you're level 1 and you don't have any good spells to cast. So you can just throw on a sword and start smacking people. And once you get to level 6, it gives you the ability to purge all ailments from somebody. You can get rid of death penalties. You can get rid of everything. You just get somebody back to full health. And especially if that's yourself, it's like a cool saving grace in any quest on a 10-minute cooldown. So great ability, no cost. Highly recommend the Sovereign Host. Now, I mentioned before that you got to cast spells, you might need components. So, for example, if I wanted to cast, I don't know, um, seriously, I don't know, Eagle Slender. It says I need a pinch of bull dung. The place that you find components, you can find them in the marketplace. So right now, I'm in the Phoenix Tavern. You can find the components in many different places. The harbor will have general vendors who sell components. There's also an apothecary in the harbor. But an easy place is the marketplace. You want to come in from this front gate here from the harbor. And then you just walk straight across the bridge to the middle section, this tent. I'm coming from the bank, but you would walk from over there, over to this tent, and you can see several vendors right here. And here you want to go to the Divine Reagent vendor, this guy, Brother Boroth. And when you talk to Brother Boroth, you can trade, and he'll have all of the Divine Reagents. Now, there's multiple classes that are divine. You've got clerics, you've got druids, um, you know, you got paladins. So to make it easy, just sort by value. So you can see the first level spell components that are a little indicated here. There's a one, there's a two, there's a three here. And then buy the ones you need. So if you're a cleric, you would buy small candles. They tell you here, pinches of bull dung for level two or level three hollow reeds. The higher level spell components can be bought in House Jurasco, which is just over here. So it's just around that kind of, uh, around that wall there. And you can go into a shop and pick them up should you need them. Now let's talk enhancements. 
there are three different cleric enhancement trees, the War Priest, the Radiant Servant, and the Divine Disciple. The War Priest is specifically a melee tree, so I'm not going to talk about it too much. Uh, it's okay, but it's not nearly as nice as the Radiant Servant and the Divine Disciple for what you're generally going to want to do. The War Priest gives you a big focus on some melee damage. It helps you increase the power of your religion's favorite weapon, so it's very important to pick the right religion with the weapon that you want to use. And your cleric, as or as a cleric, you kind of get pigeonholed into one specific weapon type pretty quickly. However, you get some good defensive abilities, uh, like taking less damage. This ability is really great no matter what type of cleric you're playing, because you can get your, for minus five, just damage taken from all attacks, which is really nice. And a lot of people like to use this tree for this ability called Divine Might, which gives you more damage based on your charisma. And that's where charisma gets kind of complicated for cleric, where you only need this if you're like a melee character, because then you can get more melee damage. But if you're not playing melee, and you're playing like a ranged or like a spellcaster, you don't really need this, so that's not that big of a deal. Radiant Servant is your healing tree. This is where you get all your heals and turn undeads. The Radiant Servant is a follower of the sun and somebody who believes in destruction of undead and healing of life. And right away, you can get at level 3 the Cure Moderate Wounds spell-like ability. So, instead of casting Cure Moderate Wounds the spell, which costs a bunch of spell points, you can get the spell-like ability. This spell-like ability is great because it is a 6 second cooldown, and with a 4 point cost, it costs less than even the regular one, which costs 8. And you can maximize it, as it says here, Empower, Heal, Quicken, which means I can turn on all my meta magics and heal myself for a huge amount. And to show you how impactful this can be, I'm just going to dump some points in here and take this. So now I've got some points, I have this. Um, you can get access to your enhancement tree by clicking this little diamond, it just opens up right away. You can see this ability. Right now, I have for eight points, Cure Moderate Wounds, and it's healing me for 28. It's not bad, but if I maximize and empower this spell-like ability, and this is the power of spell-like abilities, it costs still four, and when I press it, boom, 33. It's even more than this eight that I was doing before, so 24, but all of a sudden, boom, 42. So I'm healing for about well, it should be double. I don't know why it's not double, but about double. And it costs less, and it casts instantaneously. That's like half of my health bar, and I can do this every six seconds for almost no cost. It's kind of crazy, and this is one of the reasons why uh, the Radiant Servant Tree is really nice to go early, and you get more healing spells. Positive Energy Burst, a spell-like ability, which just, like, makes a big heal come out of your character. You can use your turn undeads for things that aren't turning undead. Turning undead, again, as I said, not always going to be useful. There aren't undead in every quest, and honestly, your turns aren't always going to work. So instead, put them to work for you by using this Channel Divinity. By channeling Divinity, you can heal yourself for a duration based on your uh, uh, your heal skill. You can remove negative effects from yourself or somebody else. Um, or you can use this one, Positive Energy Burst, which is the big one, where it heals you and all your allies around you in this big explosion of healing, which is super good. Overall, if you want to play as a healer, the Radiant Servant is the way to go. However, keep in mind, especially for the leveling process, the healers get better as you level up to the end game, and they're not the best at leveling in the experience like during the beginning. So what I would recommend is if you want to play as a cleric, try not to put more than 11 points into Radiant Servant during the leveling process, because getting positive energy bursts is really good, but most of this other stuff, a lot of these more powerful abilities, are super good for people that are playing healers, but if you don't have friends, it's going to take you a really long time to kill your way through quests, so I would recommend making sure you're bringing a friend along to help you take down some of these things. Uh, if you're going to be playing a pure healer. If not, instead, just put 11 points in here, get, you know, some of the, the whatever seems interesting at the bottom, and grab your positive energy burst, and then kind of move on. And lastly, Divine Disciple. So the Divine Disciple tree is kind of like a duality thing. You pick a light or a dark. There's two different kinds. We're going to be focusing on the light cleric for this, although dark cleric is also good. In fact, both of them are so good, that you can easily smash through the game with either one. Um, and I'll have links below to a light and dark cleric if you want to follow them. Uh, so to make sure you have each one. The reason why light is nice is because nothing resists light damage in the whole game, uh, or at least nothing is immune. There are some monsters that resist, but nothing is immune. So you can always hit monsters with light. However, with darkness, tons of monsters are immune to negative energy. Undead heal from negative, constructs are fully immune, and there's lots of those two monster types all over DDO, so keep that in mind. However, what's great about this tree is spell-like abilities. Spell-like ability Nimbus of Light, or... Uh, chill of dark or uh, chill touch spell like ability searing light or necrotic bolt spell like ability negative energy burst or holy smite spell like ability inflict moderate mass or flame strike these spells are very strong and as i said spell like ability means you can apply all your meta magic feats so you never have to worry, worry about running spell points additionally you get new spells added to your spell book like sunbolt one of the best light spells in the whole game once you get to level six 
or later on Sunbeam. Again, one of the best light spells in the whole game added to your spell book. So clerics get a whole bunch of really powerful, really strong spells and abilities out of this tree. And this is where you're going to want to spend most of your points if you're going to be playing any type of cleric for the leveling purposes. Because remember, when you put points in Divine Disciple, it makes your spells more powerful, your offensive spells, and it even makes your spells cheaper because you have this Nimbus of Light, you have this Searing Light, so it's going to cost you less mana to spend your points, which means you have more points for healing. Uh, so you might think, oh, but I want to be a healer. Yeah, but if the monsters are dead, less people need heals. Or if the monsters, uh, if you just take one out, then in one hit instead of two, then you have more mana to heal more people or yourself. So keep that in mind. Uh, the offensive version of Cleric is very good and Divine Disciple can be quite strong. Now, uh, moving on to the last part of this is items. What kind of items do you need on Cleric? Well, as we talked about, spell power. So items that have spell power. So like this is devotion for positive. You want radiance, which is for light. Uh, if you're playing as a negative cleric, you want nullification, which is for negative. And then later on, around level like 9 or 10, you want to start picking up some combustion items for some of the better fire spells that you get for burning people in a holy flame. But you also want wisdom, because that's your main stat. Anything that gives you wisdom is going to be pretty nice. Constitution items are also pretty good because they give you more hit points. Anything that says it gives you health, so, you know, a belt of false life that gives you five extra hit points, very, very nice. Your character is a heavy armor class and can use shields, so you're generally going to want to have a shield and heavy armor that can get the job done. As far as which stats are good on these, it's hard to tell. Um, generally, anything that is more universal is going to be better than anything that's more specific. So, for example, an armor that says physical resistance rating is going to be better than a like cold absorption piece of armor uh, because physical resistance rating and magical resistance rating are two stats right here that just reduce the amount of damage you take from all attacks. So physical, all physical attacks or magical, all magical attacks, which hits everything versus cold absorption, which only hits cold. It's not bad. Cold absorption is good. But if I had to pick, I'd take the one that hits kind of everything. Now, important note that while you're looking at this, uh, items don't stack. So if you have like a wisdom helmet and a wisdom ring and a wisdom set of gloves, only the highest one is going to count. There are some exceptions, and you get to that pretty farther, or much farther into the game. But in general, you want to go with highest one stack, or just the highest one counts. So if you have like a hat that has wisdom, and you have a belt that has constitution, and you have bracers that grant you physical resistance rating, well, that's pretty good, and that's gonna you want to keep those separate. So you don't need to equip multiple items of the same thing. So as far as your stats go, as I said, physical and magical resistance rating are nice. Anything that buffs up your saving throws are usually pretty good. Constitution, health, wisdom, uh, and then uh, all the spell powers that you want. So like your radiance, your devotion, your nullification, your combustion later on. Combustion is later. And then also anything that applies to the DCs of your spells, like a set of goggles that say blasting on them, because blasting will increase your... Um, is it the DCs of your actual offensive spells or uh, anything that adds to extra spell points. So it's called wizardry, like gloves of wizardry that might give you like an extra 10 or 20 or 30 spell points so you can cast more spells. These are the things you kind of want to look for during items and hopefully you'll find something that can be useful for you. Now, I want to give you a couple of parting pro tips. Number one, even though you're playing as a cleric, I would still recommend grabbing hirelings. Uh, hirelings can be bought anywhere in town you've got to the market has a bunch of hirelings right down here right when you come in so there's the front door to the market over there and there's the hirelings down there and from them you can purchase all sorts of different contracts uh, generally you want to buy a healing uh, contract like a cleric if you're playing pretty much any other class but if you are a cleric do you really need a healing contract and the answer is yes if you have a healing uh, contract that means that this character will heal you if you're not paying attention which is great because the cost is extremely low it literally costs a gold which is very easy to come by. Uh, selling even one item from your inventory is going to sell you or make a lot of money. Like these boots are 105 platinum, which is 1,050 gold. So you can spare the gold in buying the hireling. Don't worry about buying a hireling. But by having it, it means that in a bind, it'll heal you, it'll protect you. And cleric hirelings are awesome for playing by yourself. If you are uh, still wandering around and being around, make sure you're picking up a cleric hireling that can be very helpful with that. Anyways, that's all I have for you today about the beginner basics for Cleric. If you have any questions, please let me know and I'll do my best to answer them. If this has been helpful to you, please subscribe and share this with a friend. And uh, look forward to more beginner basic videos coming out soon. That's all. Thank you for watching. Check out the Twitch stream. I'm gone. Goodbye. And now it's going to fade, fade to black. Fade to black. <laughs>